Hi, in this video I'm going to show you an easy way to run commands on subsets of your data uh, using the command by. Uh, and I'm also in the process, I'm going to show you a couple of other little helper commands which are useful that index your observations and can create new variables. So I've brought in this Wooldridge data set, airfare.dta. Uh, I'll show you what's in the data set by doing describe here. You can see it's a data set which contains origins and destinations of airplane routes. Uh, and you can see they have like the average fares, average passengers per day, things like that, the year of the measurement. Uh, and you can go in the browse window here and see what kinds of things there are, right? So you can see here that this looks like this was sorted by the city of origin and the destination and the year in alphabetical order by the origin. So the first thing that we can do is we can sort this data by some other variable, right? So we could sort this in alphabetical order by the destination instead. So I'm gonna say sort destin. So you can see now here we are, we start with Atlanta as the destination. I can also sort on more than one variable. So I'm gonna say sort origin and then destination. If I do that, First, we're going to sort by in alphabetical order by the city of origin. Then after that, we're going to sort in alphabetical order by the city of destination. So sort in general, when you when you put a variable here, if it's if it's a if it's a string variable, if it's a series of letters, then Stata is going to sort it A to Z. And if it's uh, if it's a numerical variable, then we're going to sort it from low numbers to high numbers in your data set. Okay, so that's sorting. The reason why sorting is useful is once you, well, in this context, and uh, the reason why sorting is going to be useful is because we need to sort our data before we use the command by. So I'm going to show you what by does is it, uh, in this particular syntax, by origin destin, uh, what this is saying to Stata is take each value that origin and destination take each pair of values, right? So we're going to take flights from Chicago to New York City or something. And then treating only flights between Chicago and New York City as the entire data set run the following command. And the command we're going to run, we'll say we'll generate num equal to underscore little n. So we're going to create a new variable called num underscore little n is the observation number of an observation within the data set. So the first observation in the data set has underscore little n equal to one. The 30th observation has this equal to 30, right? So this is just gonna count off the observations within each pair of origins and destinations. So I run this command and I'm gonna browse and you can see what it created. So we'll have a new variable over here. So you'll see this is origin destination pair of Akron to Atlanta flights. So there are four observations here. So when I go over to the far side, we should get this new variable, which counts off one, two, three, four. First observation, second, third, fourth. And you see that is true for these other pairs as well. Looks like there are four observations for each pair of origin and destination cities. We could verify that that was the case, that there are exactly four by doing a light modification of this. So underscore little n is the observation number of an individual observation. Underscore capital N is the total number of observations in the data set. So here, whoopsies, I've already defined that variable. We'll change it to be called tote for total number of observations. Uh, so we have total number of observations equal to big N. So there should be four observations in this first city pair. And lo and behold, there are four observations in that city pair, right? So we've created this variable, which is equal to four. And then we can see whether each city pair in the data set has exactly four observations by just tabulating this variable. So you can see the only value that it takes is the value four. It takes that for every observation in this data set. 100% of the time we have four observations within every origin and within origin and destination pairs, which are observed. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna show you some slightly more interesting things now, which you can do with the command by. 
So one thing which you can do is you can use this in combination with the command egen. So egen is an extension on the command generate. Uh, and what it allows you to do is it allows you to create new variables which are functions of old variables. Uh, some of the most basic functions that you can do are means or medians or standard deviations, things like that, of old variables. So I'm going to create a new variable called average fare, and this can be equal to the mean of the variable fare here, which is the average one-way fare in dollars for that particular route. And what we've done then is we've taken the mean of fare only for each observation, only for the set of observations which have the same origin city. So all flights out of Philadelphia, average fare is going to be equal to the average fare for flights leaving from Philadelphia. Uh, and if we wanted to see which cities have high fares, then we can, you know, well, first of all, we'll want to browse on, uh, we'll sort on average fare. And then we'll browse and see what cities we have. So the first observations are going to be the ones with the really low average fares. If you look over here, that's flights leaving from Long Beach, California. We have Reno down here. You can scroll through. If we wanted to see the observations first, which had the highest fares, if we wanted to sort the data in the opposite direction, then we can use the command gsort. So to sort the variable in ascending order, you would do it with a plus sign. To sort it in descending order, you can do it with a minus. So when you do G sort minus average fare, now we're going to be ordered with the most expensive origin cities first, and then moving down here. So you can see there's a whole bunch of observations from this origin city here, which happens to be Philadelphia. And then next you have New York City is the next most expensive, etc. Okay, so this is a little messy to read through this data like this. Suppose I was willing to mangle my data and reduce this to a single line observation for each origin city, right? If I wanted to just read down what are the cities. Uh, of course, generally, before you delete observations, you might want to consider saving your data. I'm not going to do that here because this is just a demonstration. Uh, so I'm going to uh, create a new variable. So first of all, I'm going to do something which is by origin, and then I'm going to generate a variable which is just going to count off what observation number it is here. And I'm going to get an error message here because my data is not sorted. So the reason why I introduced the sort was because you have to sort your data by whatever variable you want to run by on. Uh, so I first need to sort on origin. My data had most recently been sorted on average fare, so I'm going to sort back by origin. Uh, and now I'm going to run this command. Browse over here. So my origin city is Akron. It's going to count up 1 through 8. Albany, it's going to count up 1 through 16. And you can see here it is, counting up 1 through 8, 1 through 16. Uh, and then to keep to get it down to only a single observation from each origin city, I'm just going to keep only the observations which have count equal to one, only the first observation from each city. So I'll say keep if count equals equals one. So that deletes almost all of my data set. Uh, here we have city of origin, and now I can sort. Uh, now I can sort now that I have only a single observation from each city. Now I can sort in descending order by average airfare. And you can see the most expensive city to fly out of is Tucson, followed by Philadelphia, New York, blah, 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 Cincinnati, etc. cetera. OK, uh, so this is not actually the most efficient way. If you want to do this particular thing of creating a data set of means, it turns out that there's a slightly shorter cut command which you can use which is called collapse which I'm not going to go into here but you might want to be aware of this. What I want to just illustrate for you here is that you can do a lot of cool and interesting things using the command by.